The Brown Park Podcast is brought to you by Grow Clinics. You can go to growclinics.com.au forward slash Brown Park to book a free consultation or for more information. Hello, mate. G'day, mate. How are you? Very, very special guest on the show today. And this man's story is one that you are just going to want to sit back and take in. Massively. I think um, I'm, I'm nervous that I'll cry through this one. Um but I'm sure that we're all going to come out grateful at the other end of... Yeah, I won't cry because the meds have kicked in, so that doesn't work for me. <laughs> You're numb. You're numb the whole time. See, but I'm an emotional being. <laughs> Look, our guest is Dinesh Palapana. His story is amazing. Hang around. He's coming up here on the Brown Park Podcast. The Brown Park Podcast. Question. Go. How many cars have you crashed in your life? A lot. Um, Jesus. Oh, look, let's say... Um, I'm going to round down and I'm going to say like 10. I ask this because I know that you've had a couple of incredible accidents in your life and you've managed to walk away unscathed. I've been very fortunate to be in stupid accidents through being an absolute idiot. And uh, yeah, look, I think it was way more good luck than good management. You are... Um... You're you're actually the definition of somebody who was a very 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 fucking loose unit as a child and 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 as a young adult, but has blossomed into the man that you are today. Look, look at me. I am like a <laughs> like a delicate little petal that took a while to to bloom. <laughs> a delicate little petal. That's me. That's me. <laughs> Emotional, delicate. Go easy. <laughs> Special guest. All right, today's guest. Is a doctor, a lawyer. Uh, he is the very first quadriplegic medical intern in Queensland. Uh, he is the second in Australia and the first with a spinal cord injury. And his life story is nothing short of phenomenal. And rather than me bleat on about it, I'm just going to bring him into the conversation. He's Dinesh Palapana. OAM, hello, and welcome to the show. Hey, thanks for having me. I'm, uh, it's all right. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm intrigued. Now that you said I can swear on this podcast, I'm thinking, should you know, about what I can say. Are you a swearer normally? I'm not generally. Like I have, I think it comes in waves. Yeah. You know, seasons for some, some, some days. I'm well, like, you, I mean, you're a doctor, so your bedside manner can't. You can't really walk up to someone and go, hi, how the fuck are you? <laughs> oh, you're fucked, mate. No, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> you, can't, you can't do that. <laughs> and I said I wouldn't swear on this podcast, and yet here we are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> mate, I want to I want to go back. Okay, so you, you have, look, uh, A, you've got a book out called Stronger, and I want to start off with tell us the story of young Dinesh when you were born in what sound like candy? Yeah. It sounds like the most magical place of all, but it's Candy Sri Lanka. (laughs) I know. It was candy with a K, though, so it wasn't, uh, there wasn't, I come to think of it, there wasn't too much candy there, which was a disappointment. But, (laughs) um, (laughs) you know, I was, uh, I I really, my mom, um, who's a really, really important figure in my life, and um, I'm so grateful to have her, but she always gave me a good life so I was always happy and I was always felt protected and so I had a really good childhood but um Sri Lanka when I when I was born it wasn't and actually it still isn't an easy place for people to live Mm. the three of us were here and I can see that our lights are on and we have the internet and we've probably all eaten today which is yeah great probably too much probably (laughs) probably too much but uh sri lanka today there are the inflation is something like 40 50 60 percent um there's no fuel and people have to line up for days to get fuel there's no electricity there's no food uh there's all these things so um and back then it was the things things were difficult as well pro uh in that there was a war so there was a civil war between the Tamils and Sinhalese uh, and people were just killing each other. Hey, like it was so bad. Mm. I think it's understated how violent things were and how many people died. So in amongst that civil war, there was a political war as well. Mm. There was a communist uprising and there was a guy who um, kind of modelled himself after Che Guevara and... (laughs) 
Yeah, so it, mm. that, and all these things were extremely violent. So when I was a kid, I've seen people being burnt alive in piles of tires. Now, how long gone. ago was this? Just how, how long ago are we talking? This is, you know, the war didn't actually end until some sometime just before 2010. Crazy. The late 2000s, this ended. Like, it, it was, man, people were getting blown up. Um, there were, you know, when the lockdowns happened, interestingly, for COVID, I always thought back to life in Sri Lanka because they had curfews all the time where you couldn't go out because mm. the army was floating around or the or the rebels were around and the lights were turned off because sometimes there were aerial bombings from little planes and um, they didn't want people to see where the houses were. Uh, so when the lockdowns here happened, it didn't feel super alien to me because as a kid I'd experienced all that. All right. Um, but Sri Lanka was, it, it's, I think we fail to appreciate how good a life we have mm. because we don't have any of that we can get around and even simple things you know like um when i when we moved here i could go to a school and any school would take me but over there it was you had to bribe the principal to take you into a school and <laughs> yeah it was it was oh, shit. um and there, are, there are beautiful roads and there's you can you know the one the other thing i was talking to a friend about recently simple thing of being able to turn your tap on, fill a glass and being able to drink it. Because yeah. Sri Lanka, you can't, you got to boil your water before you drink it. So that was life. That was, that was life when we grew up and uh, it was, it was a hard life for a lot of people. Um, and it's a very hard life for a lot of people now. I think you need to talk to my kids because my kids, well, my daughter gets upset if she can't get Wi-Fi. So I think we need to hook <laughs> you two up after this so she can really get a you know real perspective of what life can be like. That'd be good. I, I even went to a school where the kids didn't have shoes and their houses didn't have running water or electricity or walls sometimes. So mm. I always think back to that and think, man, i got shoes. Um, yeah. I'm I'm happy. Yeah. So, what age did you move out here? On my tenth birthday, we landed here. Um, and what year was that? 1994. So I'm 38, and it was the first time I was on an airplane. So it's the first time I was out of the country, um, and it was just like magical for so many reasons, right? Yeah. Like sitting on an airplane, and uh, I, I I threw up the whole way. I was air sick, <laughs> <laughs> but. We got to Sydney and um, I was like, oh, my God, what an amazing place. Because mm. you watch you watch movies in, in Sri Lanka and it's like, you're like, wow, look at all these Western countries and these big high-rise buildings and everyone has a car and um, you just kind of admire all this stuff and it's kind of this thing that you see and um suddenly i was in sydney and it was like a real city that i used to watch on tv mm. or movies um and it was it, it was so beautiful and actually one of the things is I've never been in a big supermarket until we got to sydney oh, wow. so we, we went to franklin's and i was wondering I'm like, oh my god you can buy everything here you can buy chocolate and you can buy kinder eggs you can buy <laughs> magazines and pizzas and whatever you want i mean it's great that you're still reflecting even now that all these years later but if you don't mind me asking how does a family in sri lanka be in a position to immigrate or migrate to to australia like did your parents have to save yeah. for years to make that happen how does it come about so i think one of the reasons why um education is so important in countries like that so when i was going to school all these kids like studied so so hard right they go home they light up their candle and they're studying to the night because there's no other way out of that life and no other way out of that place unless you educate yourself and you get yourself into a position where you might have a professional job um, and you can migrate to another country Right. So for Australia, it was the same at the time. My dad was an engineer and Australia needed engineers. So there were, um, there, there was a skilled migration program 
and uh we applied and then we ended up here by by virtue of that Excellent. uh and that's the reason how we ended up here but yeah we, we had to save a bunch of money and we didn't realize until we got here that uh tens of thousands of sri lankan rupees is like 60 bucks but yeah <laughs> i like how you said that they you know the students over there they go home they put on a candle and they study here they go home light a joint eat a bag of doritos <laughs> have a beer yeah oh, well I, I i moved to byron bay after that so, yeah. uh, yeah. <laughs> oh, <laughs> there you go oh, well. Round pop. i went to a reunion the other day a reunion okay mm. and realized that half of my fellow classmates from my graduating year are bald or losing oh, really? their hair okay. yes and it felt good not to be anymore <laughs> How did that happen, we may ask? Courtesy of our wonderful friends and sponsors of this podcast, Grow Clinics. Oh, those guys. I hear they do great work. Oh, look, I hated my hair. I hated my hairline and I hated everything about it. Uh, And then you went and got it done. Indeed, I did. I took the plunge. You did. And you went to Grow Clinics and you said, you have to go and check out these guys because they are amazing. And then when I saw the results, I'm like, I'm in, I'm done, I'm getting it done. It's 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 um, definitely a flow on effect. Anyone, well, anyone that I speak to that have had similar hairlines to both of us are always full of questions and um, start entertaining the idea of going down that track. And look, if you've ever thought of having it done, Grow Clinics are leading the way in hair loss treatments in Australia and New Zealand. Uh, They offer the most refined hair transplant technique available with natural results guaranteed. We are shining beacons of example of that. Go and get a free consultation. It's very easy. You can go to the website, growclinics.com.au forward slash Brown Park. Click on that. It'll take you straight to the consultation process where you can plug in your details and it is absolutely free. Growclinics.com.au forward slash Brown Park to book a free consultation or for more information. Brown Park. Your life, obviously, in Australia, you were studying to become a doctor. At what point did you go, you know, that this is the profession I want to do? Yeah, actually, I was never one of those guys that, uh, or girls, uh, that grew up wanting to be a doctor ever yeah I, I wanted to be a pilot i wanted to be a musician i wanted to be a basketball player i wanted to do all these other things um but never ever 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 a doctor purpose is so important to us like purpose yeah. and having something that resonates with us and having something that we enjoy is so important and i didn't have that when i finished high school so i decided to study law because i just thought it'd be a good job and whatever but it wasn't yeah. like you know, I love the law and I want to be a lawyer. And um, so none of that, but when I, so when I started going through law school, I think I wasn't really in touch with myself and I didn't know myself. And I don't think, you you know, there's that, there's that point in life where you suddenly realize who you are and you live as you, but until then you're trying to find this identity and trying to find this thing to fill your life with. And I think I've ended up getting into this really superficial life where I was just thinking about the future and how I would make, how I could make a lot of money or buy a nice car and where like, you know, all those things that I thought equated to success. Yeah. But um, I actually just became depressed as a result. Like I ended up getting st- significant depression really yeah Yeah. yep um and depression is like such an insidious thing you know because i i I was probably 20 21 then and it was it just crept up on me over a period of time Mm. i just stopped enjoying the things i used to do i started feeling sad then i was anxious and then i had panic attacks and then sleep patterns were disturbed and all this stuff and I, i was in the pits of depression and it was so bad um and it was actually more paralyzing to me than the spinal cord injury is and you wouldn't be speaking to anyone about it either i imagine back then too i mean and this is why we do what we do now because we suffered alone all those years ago we didn't get to talk to anybody like we do now it's not as you know it's not as open to discuss but it wasn't as open to discuss between people as it is now you know what i I didn't even know what it was at the time like Mm. i didn't know what was happening to me i started seeing a doctor and um i think i realized that and these are the turning points in our lives right like they say that uh it's it's an old saying that there's nothing beautiful without a struggle 
Yeah. And um, it was through that when I started seeing my doctor, like my whole world changed. And I, I, I remember the day where I realized that, oh, damn, I might have come out of it. And I realized it was like such a precious feeling because I thought, so oh, good. I feel, right. Mm. Yeah, I feel normal and I, I can feel the world again. And um, so my whole world changed and I realized my, that my doctor changed my world. Mm. And I thought, man, I, I want to do that for people. And that's how I found medicine. I had a similar experience where my doctor changed my life and discovered like well, I knew that I had it um, because it runs in my family. And I went to a doctor and he just happened to be on the board of the black dog at the time. And he's just gone, you are a textbook case. Here's what we're going to do to help you. And I remember the same thing the minute, like I'll be medicated for the rest of my life. But I remember going, Oh my God, there's color in the world again. I love it. Um, I couldn't go on and help people in medicine because I'm dumb as a brick, but, <laughs> um, <I'm in> radio. <laughs> and that's why you end up in radio. Um, but I, I get why you would want to do that because, um, I've since wanted to help people with depression because I, I can, I can do that. I can talk you through it. Man, that's amazing. But I, I love it that you say that you saw the color again, cause I felt the same way. Yeah. It's like the, I've often described it as like, there's a, when you've got depression and, and Dion, you've had small bouts of it, but I, I know I often call it like a fog. Like there's just this fog and I, it often feels like it's just sitting about here. And if I don't take my medication, that fog comes back down and it just clouds everything. And then once I take the medication, I can function as a human being again. That's incredible. Yeah. Yep. Is that what you felt? Yeah. Like I remember that moment where I felt, because I drove out of my garage, I reversed my car out, mm -hmm. and suddenly I could see the green in the trees and mm. the sun and I could feel it on my skin. And, oh, man, it was... Yeah. I love just, that. I'm getting goosebumps over here. That's so good. <laughs> <laughs> now, let's go through to what has made you now. Can you take us back to the day? Yeah. That changed your life. The day. You never forget the day. The day. Yeah. No. Yeah. Oh, it's a day that will be etched in my heart forever. Uh, and I think, like, it's almost like the day I was reborn, I think. Um, but it was the 31st of January 2010. Mm -hmm. It was a Sunday from memory. I was uh, driving back from visiting my parents' place. I was I was a medical student at the time. I was living in Gold Coast and uh, going to med school here. And I used to go home on weekends uh, just to see my mom and hang out and uh, just to be a slob, really. Was this going back to Byron Bay? Uh, they lived in Brisbane then. Oh, okay. Yeah. The Valley. No, joking. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So I visited them one weekend and came, I started driving back on that night, which was a Sunday night. And, you know, like even today, like every day, I think about sliding doors moments. Mm. Like, you know, can we really say that it's by chance that the three of us are here having this conversation? Like, so this big bang happened a billion years ago billions of years ago and then suddenly like by chance these little microbes evolved in this earth and then came to this perfect point where the three of us are i, I don't know yeah yes yeah. hang on hang on didn't god create it wasn't there like an adam and eve <laughs> is everything that i've been reading don't wrong take, don't don't do not take the podcast I have this, there i have this big i have this big book over here that says that it was god <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I was going to say, oh, God, but hey, how contradictory. Yeah, anyway, no, no, no. As you were, no, no. oh, big bang. <laughs> well, whatever it might be, yeah. I don't know. I don't know what it is, but, like, I sometimes wonder, like, geez, it's a pretty pretty big stroke of probability for us to end up at this point. Right? Yeah, 100%. But completely agree. I think that day, too, I just ended up leaving the house at a particular time through a series of events, like... I got delayed. I, I stayed to have dinner and I did this and I did that. And I picked that particular time to leave the house. And I picked a, I often used to stop um, 
when, on my way back from Brisbane to Gold Coast, I used to drive through Brisbane and stop at Mount Kutha just to, I just found it like at night, you just sit mm. up at the mountain, look over into Brisbane and it's, it kind of was a moment for me to center myself and just take stock. Mm. Um, so often it's a beautiful to, spot. Oh, so good. So I often used to just stop there and um, look over into the city and see the light sparkle and just think for for a little bit before continuing the journey. And I was going to do that that night, but I actually just didn't didn't take the turn and I veered off to go to Gold Coast. So I was like, okay, well, that's fine. And then um, I uh, ended up at this particular stretch of highway at this particular time, and it was it had rained that day. So the road had wet areas. And then the particular stretch of road I ended up in had roadworks at some point as well. They weren't doing roadworks at that time. but So it was really dark and I came up suddenly or very quickly to something that looked like a black puddle of water, oil. I don't know what it was, but as soon as I hit it, my car lost control and Mm. started spinning and spinning and spinning. And uh, this is like somewhere between 80 to 100 kilometers per hour. And I was just like, oh, man, this is, it was pretty scary. And mm, wild. Yeah. And um, then the car went off the road and there was a slanted embankment. Maybe I, I, I can't remember, but it was at an angle. And my car went up that, came back down, and the front of the car just smashed onto the highway. And then it started flipping through the air, front to back. So you vividly remember all of this? I was awake the whole time. Oh, oh, shit. Yeah. yeah. So it's flipping and flipping and flipping, and I'm like, oh, my gosh. There's, like, things are flying around the cabin. Things are exploding. Things are loud. I'm, I'm, uh, luckily, I was wearing a seatbelt, and I was just like, I, I, I'm screwed. I can't do anything now. Mm-hmm. Uh, but interestingly, I was at work recently and there was a patient who had a car accident mm. and I was talking to this person and we, we, we both connected by the fact that we both had car accidents, but we both, um, made it a point that time seems to slow down when you're in a situation like that. Yeah. 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 And that's what happened to me too. And there was a point in time where I was literally upside down in the car. And I just thought, there is nothing more I can do about this now. Yeah. And the only thing I can control is the way I see this situation. And so I'm just going to have fun. Yeah. <laughs> While the car's flipping. Yeah. So I've, because... I've had the same. So I mean, and when you finish on your story, the, the sliding doors moment you talk about, I've rolled a car in a similar circumstance to this. So once you finish that, I'd like to see, yeah, we'll just have a chat about that after this. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, but I mean, that's, that's just what I did towards the end of the accident. I was just like laughing and carrying on and having a blast because it's all I could do. Right. And that's, that's, I think that's partly why I can talk about it as Mm. well, because like, I don't really care. Like I was just having fun. Do you remember anything flying past you going, Oh, that shouldn't be there or (laughs) in that particular moment. And I I know, know, like I can ask that because I know you've got a great sense of humor, (laughs) Yeah, but is it, do you remember anything about that moment or you just remember, you know what, Woo-hoo, let's do it. You're on a ride. You're on a ride at that moment, yeah. aren't you? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. I was on a ride. I was actually very impressed that um, a laptop that I had was flying around the cabin <laughs> and it survived. Oh, wow. So, um, I won't mention the particular brand of it, but uh, <laughs> yeah, I, was, I was just very impressed that it lasted the whole saga and I could use it again once I, once I, was in the hospital. I just have this vision of you upside down going, oh, I thought I'd lost that. Damn yeah. it, there it was. <laughs> oh, to that <laughs> oh, man. Um, yeah. And the, but, you know, the, the thing is, so I was having a blast, um, having, having a blast, having an accident. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but I stopped having fun when it landed because... Yeah. The car landed upright. The car landed on the side of the road, both of which are probably fortunate things. And then uh, I tried to get out of the car. Mm. 
And that is when I realized that my fingers weren't working anymore and that I couldn't move and I couldn't feel my legs and I couldn't feel anything below the chest. Holy crap. Wow. Yeah. And, and did you know in that moment that this is bad? I mean, being a med student, I would assume that you'd be processing yeah. this relatively quick in your mind. Did you know how bad it was at the time? Yeah, I knew. I knew. Like, I knew. Because, like, you learn, right, in med school, you're like, okay, spinal cord injury, cervical spinal cord injury, always be careful, always protect the spine, always mm. always be mindful of that, don't do any more damage. Like, you learn and learn and learn and learn and learn. And, uh I knew what had happened and I knew the severity of it. Like I knew that my life has now changed forever. Mm. From that point on, the challenges were going to be significant. And, um, you know, I can't, I can't even begin to tell you what that feels like. Like the sickening realization like because it happened in seconds right mm, like you're just yeah. this guy going about life and then within seconds that happens to you i i, I can't i can't like begin to tell you because there's no warning there's no preparation bam you're there mm. life is so fleeting you can just change in an instant and you you've lived that it's um where do you even go? Where do you even go from there? Yeah, I think the thing I realized though is um, I work in an emergency department today, right? And our, our department is actually the busiest in the country. And through the hallways and around the department, if you look up, there are screens hung up. And sometimes it'll start to flash and you'll hear an alarm go off. Mm. And there'll be something like a, it'll say like trauma or uh resuscitation or whatever and you know when that is happening that there is a critically ill person or at least someone who we are worried is critically ill or critically injured has been brought in mm. and you know that some some of those people may not survive you know that some of those people has had a life-changing event where they'll never be the same again mm -hmm. what that buzzer reminds me every day when i'm at work is exactly that, that life is fleeting. And I wonder, I wonder what that person did today. And I wonder whether they're happy with their life. And I wonder yeah. what they did and wonder whether they told the people that they loved, that they loved them before they left home that day. I wonder if they did that thing they wanted to do, you know, like. Mm. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, 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 and do you find yourself telling the people you love them, that you love them more now? Are you a, a lot more communicative now after the accident? I think I definitely, I, I appreciate them so much more and I am thankful to them so much more and mm. I'm thankful to the people around me. And I, um, but I think I'm also more, more grateful for life. Like I'm just grateful to wake up. I'm grateful to have all these things. I'm grateful because like, I, I just know, right. And, and, nothing else matters apart from this moment in front of us like this moment where we're having this conversation like that's a precious thing right mm. because i don't know none of us know what's even gonna we're not sure we can't tell with certainty what what things will be like in the next three hours right we don't yeah but so you said you work in the busiest emergency ward in australia and that's the gold coast yeah does that just mean the Gold Coasters do a lot of dumb shit? <laughs> I, uh, like per head of population? Because it's only like six or 700,000 people live on the Gold Coast. Um, like, And it's the busiest in the country. Do, do they do a lot of dumb shit? There, 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 is certainly, um, <laughs> there is certainly a lot of fascinating yeah. <laughs> things fascinating. that I have the Love it. privilege of being a doctor. <laughs> <laughs> Round pop. Hey, big shout out to our sponsors, Grow Clinics. I had a kitchen renovation done a while ago, and bear with me, this has a story <laughs> and it is going to. Where is this going? Okay. And when they came out to our place, they showed us the old kitchen and then in a 3D diagram what our new kitchen would look like. 
based on the space that we've got there. And we were sold on it. We went, that is the kitchen we want. Let's do it. Mm -hmm. I had the exact same experience when I went to grow clinics and they showed me where my new hairline would be. And when I saw the map of it, oh, the yeah. Sharpie hairline, I've yeah. gone, I am in, sign me up. Because when they draw that Sharpie hairline on, you're going, even if it's close to that Sharpie hairline, I'll be pumped. But the hairline that they draw is legit the hairline that you actually get. It's, it's yeah. mental. Yeah. And that's what we've both ended up with, thanks to Grow Clinics, who are leading the way in hair loss treatments in Australia and New Zealand, and they offer the most refined hair transplant technique available. Natural results are guaranteed. And can I just say, I'm using a ring light for those of you that can't see it, and I never would have shined a light on my head <laughs> no. when I had my Twin Peaks. Because the glare would have been too much off the top of your head. We wouldn't have been able to see you. Sorry, Dion, what are you saying? I can't hear you over your forehead. So look, they've got clinics all over the shop. Uh, Brisbane, Gold Coast, Melbourne, Sydney and Perth. It's the ultimate hair growth experience where you're taking care of every step of the way. Uh, and also, um, if you're not keen to go down the transplant route, although you should, and they do uh, payment plans and stuff like that to make it easier on the hip pocket, um, they also have other hair loss solutions so if you're not quite ready for it yet you can uh you can go and check them out as well so go and check out the website growclinics.com.au forward slash brown park to book a free sorry what was uh, that free consultation or for more information brown park when you're telling this story so just uh, when i was 19 or 20 i, I was driving this soft top four-wheel drive down the tweed heads bypass i was doing 110 k's down the highway and um I'd worked all night and I fell asleep behind the wheel and I woke up, sort of woke up briefly and saw roadworks happening in front of me. And I, I swerved this four wheel drive with no roof on it and it rolled, um, I think about six or seven times through a medium strip and came to a rest on the northbound lane of the Tweed Heads bypass. And hearing this story now, I'm just, you know, you know I want to say grateful that I managed to walk away from that. We, and, and we talk about sliding moments. What if you left a little bit earlier? What if I was going a little bit slower? What if I was going a little bit faster? But the point where I swerved and rolled was in like a 300 meter stretch where there was no trees in that median strip. So this four wheel drive had no roof on it. And I'm rolling vividly remembering that I'm in, in a, in a serious incident here and I'm rolling and I just know it was, I had the steering wheel. I'm just can vividly remember myself going over and over and over and over. When it came to a stop and all these people come running over, I unclip myself and I walk away. And the only thing I was concerned about was that my surfboard got thrown out of the four-wheel drive 200 metres back. <laughs> so moment of gratefulness for me that I managed to walk away from that in that moment when you lived a similar experience and one of the worst things that could happen has happened. That is amazing, particularly because you're in a soft top too. Yeah. yeah I had no roof. Whoa. Yeah. 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 And That's I did have that. my dad in the car. So, and you know, I, I, me being stupid when I was that age, um, when I had my surfboard in the car, you couldn't, the passenger couldn't wear the seatbelt. And I just dropped my dad off at the airport. So I kept oh, thinking, God. lucky it did, if that had to happen on the way to the airport, mm. life would have been oh. changed forever. So, Anyway, the the interesting thing that you say about that moment in time, and there's two things that I know about your story, and one is the last thing you remember before the accident. Can you tell people what that is? Well, so the very last thing, the very, very last thing that I have done standing up was to give my mum a hug. Oh. That is the, um, I gave her this big bear hug because she's, she's shorter than me. Um, and I gave her this big hug and then I jumped in the car. That was it. Like I, I literally took a few steps. Mm -hmm. got in the car and that, so that was the very last thing I did standing up. Um, and the other, the other thing is that you say to this day, it was, what happened in that car was the greatest moment of your life. Yeah. And I think, um, I don't think it happened to me. I think it happened for me because it's the hardest thing I've ever had to do. Right. It is. I mean, the last, it's been over 12 years now and 
particularly in the first part of those 12 years, me and my mom, like we, we struggled. There were so many struggles. Now you went, you had to go back to Sri Lanka, didn't you? Yeah. And, and this yeah. is in your book and you actually detail what happened in Sri Lanka. Yeah. Quite vividly. So how long after the accident did you have to, or did you go back to Sri Lanka? We went pretty soon after I was discharged from the hospital because it was hard, right? There was no NDIS then. Mm -hmm. Uh, We didn't have much support. We were really struggling and things got much worse after that um, where mum and I didn't know where we were going to live the next day. We didn't have any money. We were... There were days when I didn't eat. There were days when I didn't, like, you know, I realized recently there was a period of time where I didn't own a pair of shoes. Uh, When I got discharged from the hospital, they made me these pair of fluffy, like, foot covers to avoid wounds. Mm. And I was just wearing those for the longest time. But things were hard. But, you know, we've come out of it and we've come so far. And today I think I, I hope that I'm a better person for it. And I hope that, um, you know, I met so many amazing people that I have in my life. Um, I've had experiences and I am who I am today because of it. So I think now when it first happened, I would have done anything to have my old life back, but now I wouldn't trade my life for the world. And I'm, I'm grateful for it. Well, you're changing lives all around your brother. Yeah. And, uh, you, you inspire anyone you touch. Uh, thank you. Um, and, you know, that's the other thing. Like if this whole journey can make a difference in a single person's life, mm. I think that's totally worthwhile. And it has, I know, because you've, you've done work with sporting teams. You're, you're a great speaker. And when you read the reviews of, of some of the, the speeches that you've given, people walk away changed because of it. So you are definitely changing lives. And, and, and you, people are going to go and pick up the book and have a look and, and read more about your overall story because it's extraordinary. And I mean, we could sit here and talk to you for the next two hours about your life. It's insane. Um, but, I, uh, but being a doctor, and I, I want to have some fun for two seconds. Yeah. I've always heard that hospitals have an ass box, and I just want to wow. confirm <laughs> whether this is true or not. <laughs> and What's this an is box? it's it's a box uh where the doctors and nurses put in notes of people that have come into the hospital with things jammed up their ass. Yeah, is this ass true? Box. You know, <laughs> we, we, we we have we, a great doctor, he's not yeah. gonna lie. You have to ask are this you question. asking the, are you asking this because you want to be careful what you yeah. assert? No, because I know that some do, because I, I've been friends with nurses and doctors and they've gone, everybody has a story. I know we, we don't have an ass box. We don't have an ass box. But uh there's never a um shortage of I suppose surprise at um what, what people sleep on. Be. Yeah. Well, I mean <laughs> it, the the variety of foreign bodies that can be um, inserted into various orifices is <laughs> like, it's, you know, I, I, I think it's never, you know, sometimes. To, <laughs> I've thrown you, haven't I? I'm really I, sorry. I feel like we hit no, a no, real, it's, it's, real it's, new low it's, on this podcast. I just feel like we just, we just went low. <laughs> no, it's an excellent, it's a great question because we go to work and it'll, uh, like uh, all our colleagues, right, nursing, medical, we're, we're sometimes just like, you know, this is the, only job where where you come across these situations. So. Yeah. Can you give us one object? Don't say the person. Don't say who it was because you can't because you're a doctor. Or well, the one, the randomest object that you have seen inserted into an orifice. Oh my god. Okay. Yeah. No, I, I would. I would. But um, I think I got to be a. Uh, I think I that's a, yeah. Okay. Fair enough. I'll tell you the one that I've heard. Yep. Go a, rec- a Rexona can. I've heard in exclamation marks. No. <laughs> <laughs> a Rexona can. That is not out of the realm of possibility. No. Okay. Yeah. Because I always have this mental vision of the person going. Ksh. But <laughs> see, never have I had that mental vision. Never have I had that mental vision. So we need. To see, you need to see a counselor, brother. <laughs> but uh, you know, you know what though. In in terms of objects, I can tell you that is probably the most conservative object. Wow. <laughs> Okay, the ass box lives. <laughs> <laughs> Dinesh Palapana, you are very gracious with your time, uh, and thank you for humouring me through the ass box because 
I wanted to know. Um, and <laughs> your book is uh, stronger and your life is extraordinary. And and like Dion was saying before, I think anybody that you touch with your story is going to walk away changed. And I'm, I'm glad you could share it with us today. Uh, thank you so much for having me. It's, um, it's you know, it's a privilege. And I'm just super grateful for these moments and I'm super grateful for you and your time um, and our mutual friend, Emily Jade. Yes. Her friendship and connecting us. And who knows, maybe in the future we can have uh Christo and Dinesh with the Ask Box podcast. <laughs> <laughs> coming soon. Coming, oh, coming soon. Yeah. There we go. <laughs> Dinesh Malavana. <laughs> OAM, thank you very much for joining us on, on the Brown Park podcast. Thanks a lot, man. Thank you, man. <laughs> Holy crap. What an amazing human, right? Just moment of absolute gratitude that him and I were in similar accidents. Mm. And yet I'm here living my life. And he is living his life, but in a completely different manner, That's but it. one in which he is absolutely happy and content with every single day. Everybody that comes across him says his bedside manner is just incredible. I'll bet. And I he's mean, a great doctor. And and I see he's, he's started up um, Doctors with Disabilities because I know yep. part of his story was he finished his um, medical degree and then was a graduate without a job for, for mm. a very long time. So mm. he's, he's not only inspiring people to see the great things in life, he's helping others that have, are in similar situations to him. I just yep. so commendable that life is, like, life is what you make it. Yeah. And his book is called Stronger. And look, it, he goes into a lot more detail. Disappointingly, though, um, not one mention of the ass box in his book at all. I'm going to say, what he, does he mention the ass book? Because no, 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 I think that's a very not a selective of the audience. Box. I, I, I dare say that will be the sequel coming out soon. <laughs> um, look, uh, if you want to find him. Um, go and search him on socials. The, the, his details are in the show notes to this podcast, uh, as they always are. We always put them there. Um, please go and support him and, and read the book. That's all I can say. Uh, thanks to our sponsors, Grow Clinics, for their continued support of this podcast, although I think after the Ask Box, they might be reconsidering. And <laughs> we... Maybe that's where they can take the hair from. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> and we will see you next time on the Brown Park Podcast. Thanks for tuning in. Or maybe you won't now. But yeah. <laughs> <laughs>